episode, I have a very interesting guest with me. It's the co-founder of Wilson Shields, Mr. Sheyi Abalaji. It's great to have you with us on the it's academy. It's a pleasure to be here. I'll mention, you know, you need 100 million naira for this machine. Hmm. Or you need 150, or you need 50, or you need 50. You know, just crazy numbers at that time to us. They were very crazy numbers. That, and again, instead of like being discouraged, I was so excited when I left because I was thinking, wow, the smartest people, the people that know this thing, aren't my competition. Hmm. So uh, marketing, packaging, especially when it comes to agricultural products, I think many people that are doing agricultural products are so focused on the product so. um, that they lose, they, they forget, like, like we did when we first started, that no, somebody needs to like see, like, and reach out for the product. Exactly. It doesn't matter how good it is, or it does matter, but that's, they first need to pick it up. Okay, that's so awesome. making it attractive enough to pick up. Mm, okay, next to opportunities, basically, in our culture. Um, our culture is like the new all in Nigeria. Everyone's been, okay, their culture industry is the next industry that will boom. Yeah. But um, what do you think, or what opportunities do you think are available for people that may want to come into the industry? You are into foods, mm -hmm. some others are into fish farming, but what exactly are opportunities that well many Nigerians could explore in our culture? There are many, many opportunities, and, I, and so I'll list some of the opportunities. And, and I think it's very, very important that as entrepreneurs or retirees come into agriculture, that um, individuals focus, mm. right? So you have from even before you plant anything, um, fertilizers, preparing, clearing okay. land, preparing land. That's a business opportunity in itself. Then you have the actual planting and um, rearing of these crops to maturity. That's an opportunity. You have the harvesting. That's okay. an opportunity. You have the transport. Okay. That's an opportunity. Mm. You have the, the processing, okay. um, the packaging than the marketing and the selling. Okay. Many people look at agriculture as, like they look at all of that as, okay, one big opportunity. And if one individual tries to do the whole oh, line, okay. it, it'll be so overwhelming. Um, the reality of Nigeria today um, with energy, um, um, electricity is getting better, uh, but it's still far from where it can be to make things convenient for people. Um, transportation, um, and basic infrastructure, water and, and, and things like this, is, is such that if you want to try to do the whole chain yourself, you would, if you're not, you know, Bill Gates, you're gonna have to be very close to him so he could sponsor you to be able to do it all yourself. We chose to focus on processing, and that's all we were able to begin with 2009. Um, and we just focused on processing, focused on processing. As we've been growing, you know, there's been opportunities to go into, okay, now let's clear land and let's plant and this. And, you know, again, ab about seeking out mentors, we saw some people online in Ghana um, doing some tremendous things okay. um, with agriculture, a company called Blue Skies. Okay. And we had an opportunity to go see them and speak to the, um, the MD there. And they've been doing tremendous things in Ghana for about 20 years now. Within the last two, three years, they just started planting which showed me, which tells me how, how much can be done if you're focusing on their doom, uh, processing, if you focus in your area. Um, and then the scale that they're operating at now, it's, it's just massive. Mm -hmm. So now they're starting to go backwards, but they've, they've established something. They have a base, they have revenues. Okay. They're making a decent profit that can now fund them going to do other parts of the chain. But looking at the content exactly, how is it produced? in terms of sourcing for it from local mm -hmm. and locally, and as well as um, now bringing it to the final produce. How exactly are the step-by-step, step? and is it actually comparing it to other juices that are concentrated, and yes. what exactly is the nutritional value of okay. those juices? So um, let's start with how is it s sourced through production. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, one thing that's very, very important to us is to support our local communities. Okay. So um, it's much easier to do concentrates. It has its own challenges, sure, but in terms of availability of raw materials, it's much easier. We've chosen to let our community and our partners grow with us. Okay. This is the model we're, we're, we're implementing. And by doing such, 
we were going to the markets to buy bags of lemons at one point. Then it was big bags of lemons, these rice bags of lemons. Then it was, oh wow, we need a vehicle to be transporting lemons. Now it's trucks and trailers that are coming with lemons. So um, one market, we were going there and we thought, ah, this is infinite amount of lemons. Uh, we've learned very, very, very quickly that you need more than one source. Mm -hmm. So we have lemons coming from all across Nigeria. Okay. This, this country is blessed. It, it really is blessed. If you're ready to work and look hard enough. Mm -hmm. um, we've been disappointed, surely. Certainly we've been disappointed. Um, but we have stayed true to some of our partners. And um, before our very eyes, looking at them themselves, how they present themselves, their families, and then now their business. They're building their business around our business mm -hmm. in terms of supplying us. You know, and what we were doing, even January, you know, we're doing four or five times that now in uh, August. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, um, so yeah, so we have the sourcing of the raw materials. Um, we have people dedicated to that specifically. Okay. Um, we're not looking at today, we're looking at how we're going to find enough lemons for next year, mm -hmm. the following year. Um, that's one. Um, then, you know, we, we had a plastic juicer that we were using here. Then we had a juice that we press. Then we built a locally fabricated uh, juicer. Okay. Then we imported a juicer. Okay. Um, and we're looking to import several more juicers now. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we, we really want to keep this let the community benefit from everything we're doing. So we, we, we wanted to have uh, uh, Nigerian engineers f make these things for okay. us, but it's consistency, reliability, and, mm. and um, integrity has just been a, a big challenge. One of our overarching goals as an organization is we want to make healthy, available, and accessible to the masses. Okay. We're looking forward to a day with our input into this market that somebody can look at a fizzy drink and look at our product. And the question isn't, ah, do I have extra money for this healthier thing? Mm -hmm. The question is, do I want fizzy or do I want healthier? Mm -hmm. Right now, they still have to say, ah, even if I want healthier, do I, am I ready to spend? We're trying to eliminate that question that people have to ask mm -hmm. with all our products mm -hmm. um, across the range. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's our goal right now. Okay. And then when they look at other things that people call juice here, I don't know if you really call that juice, um, but other things people call juice and still our product is still, we want the, the question still to remain. Um, after we go from, from fizzy to healthy, then to concentrate to more natural. Oh. Mm. So we, we, we believe we're gonna win if we're able to make this option, this natural, delicious option available and accessible to the masses. Okay. All right. Well, you know, what exactly do you think is needed for the cultural industry to be promoted in terms of governance and everything attached to it? You know, so this is a funny question for, for me specifically because, and again, I, I look at my mother and father and um, we moved to the U.S. when we were so young and the challenges that we faced as a family there you know, um, I don't laugh, but I, I get a little saddened when people say, ah, why would you leave there to come here? Because people there are working. <laughs> people there are slaving. I don't even call it working. They're slaving um, to make ends meet. Um, so the, 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 the question you ask, I'm getting to is, so from that experience, from that background, and then combined with you know, the racism and everything we were facing, and mom and dad saying, on top of all that, you will excel. excel. It's been so ingrained into us that you don't look outside for assistance. Mm -hmm. You do what you can with what you have per time. Mm -hmm. You set a goal, and then you do what you can with what you have per time. And that doesn't mean you set lower goals because you don't have what you what? need. Exactly. No, you still set that goal. And then if it means instead of taking one big step, maybe you need to take half a step, but you need to keep moving forward by all means. So we haven't really put much thought or much energy into what, ah, what if the government, what if somebody or something outside would help this environment? Hmm. Rather, we, we said because of this environment and everything that's not being provided for, that's where the opportunities lie. Hmm. 
this is where the opportunities lie. Okay. You know, in, in, the, in the US, for example, where, where we are, um, came from is you have to, before we even start our business, it's not, two, 2009 today is like $10. Minimum, you'll raise, we just heard about a company that started two years ago doing something very similar to what we are in the US. They've raised over $50 million. We started with $10. You can't do something like this in the US because of that environment. Now, if as an individual now I'm saying, I, I wish the government would do this, local government comes here, state government comes here. I'm on need land. It's, 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 it's amazing. Have, let, me, let me keep it very positive. It's amazing. Um, if I was to put any energy, mental energy, into thinking what if something or somebody from outside assisted, we would still be in a kiosk saying, ah, when things are better outside, we will go. So um, I maintain that even today, because of the situation in Nigeria, mm -hmm. that's why there are so many opportunities for anybody that's willing to work hard enough, mm -hmm. think creatively enough, mm -hmm. and just has the persistence, the perseverance, that spirit that mm -hmm. I will succeed no matter what. Mm -hmm. All right. yeah. Finally, what's next for Wilson's Juice? Are we looking at a new, maybe not lemonade this time, maybe orange juice, or what exactly are we looking forward to with Wilson's Juice? Um, what's next for Wilson's? We're gonna take over Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> right, we, we, again, our, our mission is to make um, healthy, available, and accessible to the masses. Okay. And in that regard, so we started with lemonade. We still have two or three lemonade-related products. Okay. So we have lemonade, um, old-fashioned lemonade, right? Okay. So old-fashioned means freshly squeezed. Okay. Um, old-fashioned lemonade, because um, some people say, ah, why not the new fashion now? Why not the old fashion? Uh, new fashion is concentrate. Hmm. Old-fashioned, freshly squeezed lemonade. We have uh, pink lemonade, which we make with the, again, harnessing these natural resources. Hibiscus, okay. um, zobo, mm -hmm. the zobo leaf. This is people, people rubbish this thing here. This is, is gold. Mm -hmm. So we mix a blend of, we make real tea, okay. hibiscus tea, and mix it with a lemonade. Mm -hmm. That's how we get our pink lemonade. Okay. We have an orange lemonade that we just got NAFDAC for. Oh, okay. um, we're coming out very soon with a, a low sugar lemonade for our people that are running away from sugar. Um, and then an iced tea lemonade, mm. and it's, it's delicious, it's delicious. Wow. As Nigeria is growing, as people are becoming more health conscious, more aware of the quality of the things going in their body, mm. companies like ours are going to be much, much more valuable, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, instead of focusing on that 1% of the market that we can make huge margins, we have something for them too. But we're trying to now tap this huge margin, uh, this huge population that, that right now all they really have is the option of fizzy or colored or flavored mm -hmm. or artificially sweetened. We're, we're trying to provide a, an alternative mm -hmm. for, for that segment as well. Wow. Wow. I'm yeah. going to say thank you so much for being with us on the academy. It's been great speaking to you. And then I look forward to the new beverages that we're expecting. Thank you so much. I Mr. hope you'll Shia be one of our uh, samplers, if you don't mind. Okay. We'll talk about it after. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you. Shia. It's a pleasure. Well, that'll be all on the Academy for this week. It's been very enlightening with Mr. Sheyi Abalaji, co-founder of Wilson's Juice. Well, don't forget to join us on our social media platforms, Facebook and Twitter, and keep the date with us next week on the Academy. Till then, thank you very much for watching, and bye for now.